Yes, hello today, look. We've got a wall, it's, it's hardwood flooring. I mean, hardwood wall. Just give the intro. Welcome to my channel, where cringy intros are cringy. All right, so for this video, we're gonna be looking at the top five best generic extreme co-op units. So what do I mean by that? I mean, they are not a boost unit or they're not featured in said list. I would say what I'm trying to talk about, but I think this picture will do a lot better job than me trying to fumble around with my words, trying to figure it out. So basically what we're really looking at in this particular list, we're looking for five units that no matter which iteration of extreme co-op they throw at us and which unit is the new extreme co-op boss, that these particular units that are on my list can beat it effectively every single time. And funnily enough, this list will be featuring five units that I have always been able with a partner or on my own with the random be able to actually beat these extreme bosses with these units. So as a result, we will not be talking about the Super Saiyan 4 Monkey King or Teletubby Zamasu because they are no longer boost units like they were in third anniversary. And obviously we will not be discussing Revival Death Han or Revival Han that transforms from the movie to kill Bojack and is, he's good, but he's not the same as like when he has no boost. So once again, this list will be covering generic units. And I, I have to stress this because we are not going to be covering boost units. Is it okay for some of these units on this list to have been a like pseudo boost unit in the past? So like getting one buff that's like 75% buff or something? Yes, that's okay. But I'm like referring to those like top tier boost units for that particular seasonal co-op. Those will not be making an appearance because those are actually not very good later down the line. So without further ado, let's get to our top five. And at number five, we have Zenkai 7 Namiku. And this kind of, he'll just be right here. He's just chilling. So what makes this guy so good? Well, to, talk, to first start off, he's already respectable in terms of stats just because he's a Zenkai unit. And obviously, since he's a Zenkai unit, he's at least minimum seven stars. To top that off, he's also a Legendary, Legends Limited unit, so that also really helps him as they usually elevate Legends Limited unit stats a little bit more than your generic sparking unit, so that's also really nice there. But he does a lot more than just be a nice looking unit that you have a Zankai for. He also has a transformation, which not only boosts how much his max health is, but also his stats get a much needed boost. And on top of that, just in general, his kit is finally being utilized in the most optimal way possible. So first things first, if you've got, let's say, a, a situation where you need a dodge, well, all of a sudden, not only can you do that, but if you have a green card attached to it, you can regain some of that vanish gauge back just instantly by swinging around the rosy and just eating whatever co-op boss into outer space. So as a result, this guy can vanish pretty much as often as you need him to, as long as you have a green card attached. And in case you don't have whatever green card you're looking for, well, there's another thing he's got. He's got a bucket at all, which is basically where he just counters and wrecks some co-op boss. It's um, it's pretty good. He's solid. He's definitely solid. So you already have the situation where you have a Namaku that is basically countering, but you also have him being able to restore his vanish gauge which just generally means that you have a very good, util useful unit that is able to counter and also both dodge very, very effectively. This also applies to when he is doing his cover change or essentially cover changing to knock your buddy out of the way so they don't take a hit. You can chain that with your Bakayero and all of a sudden your, your, the AI is taking much more damage than they normally would because of the counter setup that the Bakayero gets when you activate it as they're attacking. But now we gotta unfortunately talk about some downsides. So first off, with our Namaku, one thing we have to take note of is the fact that he has no way to heal. So as a result, how much damage he takes is gonna be the damage that he retains. There's no way to go around that. He does not have an active green card that also heals him. He doesn't have a main ability that heals him. The only thing he really has is the ability to Bakayero and to regain Vanish Gauge. 
which is definitely respectable. And you can definitely make this unit work optimally in this mode. But at the same time, you know, there are potentially better units out there to do the same thing, but better. On top of that, he does need 15 seconds prior to his transformation, in which case his blue card is just a generic Kamehameha, which is more than sufficient. But the thing about that is, in case that it's a last minute counter, well, you will not be countering. In fact, you'll just take the hit instead. Whereas the Bakero itself would just allow you to counter no matter how close your AI opponent is to hitting you. So that's just another downside to Namiku. But despite all that, this guy is definitely hitting the top five of this list and is just an overall solid unit and definitely earns his spot at number five. And at number four, we have Transforming Zenkai 7 Pickle Dad. And he's beautiful, he's my dad, and I'm not explaining why. But basically what's nice about this dude is he's got so many things going for him. He's got a blue card that in his base form can remove any attribute upgrades that you, the AI has. This is extremely solid as it can just wipe out any problematic buffs that the AI gives themselves over time. On top of this, this guy also has a fantastic green card, which unlike Namaku, well, this guy, he heals. Now his healing isn't exactly what I would call immediate, it's a heal that allows him to heal himself for 30 seconds over time. And this can actually be a great benefit to him and maybe even better than your generic heal as if you can equip him with anything that also gives him health restoration up. Well, this over time healing will be doing a lot more and a lot more effectively than your generic just heal up, which is also very solid. On top of that, if in case you vanished and you need to vanish again for whatever reason, he has a main ability that, well, first off, recovers his Vanish Gauge and increases his stats by a lot. This includes his health, so it's just a win-win in that particular scenario. So if you need to dodge again, boom, you can dodge again. But then on top of this, his green card changes, so that way when he is using it, the first time he uses it, he draws a blue card. Now this blue card is a legendary finish attack, just like the Bakayoro in the last unit, our Namiku. But what's nice about it, it also has blast armor. So in case your opponent uses that pesky blast, well, you can just go right through it. You will take the damage, but at least you'll be countering back with your own very solid, solid attack. And then the final thing that I would definitely like to discuss about him is that one of his passives includes the word him, his teammates, or a buddy by 20% that, that increase in damage. And... I don't know about you, but if you don't know what the term buddy stands for, that is actually in reference to co-op, which means that this guy not only is a solid PvP and PvE unit, but he's also a very, very solid co-op unit. And that is just amazing and makes my dad really, really cool. Thank you, dad. But of course, just as there are upsides, there are unfortunately downsides to any given unit. And this guy's downsides are no exception. Well, first off, despite having the ability to transform and having two main abilities, which is awesome, uh, it's just unfortunate that his green card does change and not give him that overtime healing, as that can be extremely useful and sometimes is very needed. Now, there is an argument to be made about this negative, which is that you could always transform later after you are more or less efficient in regards to your health, but realistically speaking, ne things never go 100% to plan when you're playing extreme co-op. So the reality of it is that you're eventually going to have to transform or else you probably are just going to lose Piccolo or not have enough health anyways by the time you do transform. So just in general, the lack of not being able to heal does hurt his versatility, despite him being so versatile because you can choose when to transform him, unlike Namiku, where you just need to transform him, otherwise you're just cucking yourself. But regardless, overall, he's a fantastic unit, definitely better than Namiku, and definitely deserving of the number four spot on this list. And at number three, we have Super Saiyan Blue Zenkai 7 Goku, and... Uh, if you're asking, like, why is he above Pickle Dad? Well, I'll explain it, like, literally now. So, unlike the versatility that Piccolo offers, this Super Saiyan Blue Goku is, well, not versatile at all. At least 
not in the sense of how he plays. He is definitely deceptively uh, versatile, I would say, in co-op, as his kit essentially does kind of sh take a nice shift as soon as a certain amount of timer counts pass. So let me explain. So for the first 45 timer counts, this guy is going to be a high defensive tank, similar to that of Shallot once Shallot transforms. However, that eventually shifts to offense. So he will be gaining a greater boon in offense, which means that he'll be doing more damage over time and just generally speaking more damage after the 45 timer count. Now this is fantastic as you want to be, as you get closer and closer to your rising rush or another rising rush, that you are able to do more damage with this unit. On top of that, literally everything he does gives him extra damage buffs. Use a strike card, damage buffs, and some key. Use a blast card, damage buffs, and some key. Use a blue card, increase your damage. If you use a green card, and this is the kicker, you get not only an increase in damage and also some key restoration, but you're also going to get 10% to heal, which you can abuse a little bit with health, health restoration buffs through equips. So he's got that too. And on top of that, in case that you've dodged and for some reason you need to dodge again, otherwise you're going to take a massive hit, you can always click his main ability. He regains 100% of his Vanish gadge, and then you can dodge again. Excuse me. And on top of that, he's got an ultimate card, so he does hit like a truck too. So that's that's pretty cool. So that's solid. Another reason why he is so good in particular this mode, and, and pretty much in every mode, PvP and PvE included, is the fact that he is a pretty much free-to-play character. And I am actually serious. He You get him to seven stars upon playing the game and completing, I think it was the intermediate or the starter modes of this game. And on top of that, in the Ultra Space Time Rush shop, you can get him to Zenkai 7 for free. So, he's actually very free to play. It's just free to play with some time invested into this game. So that already makes a lot of new players chances to getting this character and also being able to play in co-op, especially the stream mode, a lot easier. If there's only one thing I could actually figure out in regards to what's his weakness in this mode, it's the fact that A, he has that ability, just as I said that it's great, it also has a double-edged sword, his ability to lose his defense and in exchange get more offense is a double-edged sword as he will no longer be tanking as well after 45 timer counts, and that means you generally have to be pretty careful about how often you take a hit or if you want to even take any hits at all. But despite all of this, this guy is just a formidable tank, a formidable damage dealer, doesn't really need co-op buffs to perform well, and as a result, is definitely deserving of the number three spot on this list. And at number two, we have Transforming Green Goku Black. Now, if you ever wanted to hear the word Zankai, but without a Zankai, this is the unit. I'm not even kidding you. This, this guy is the unit to talk about when you're discussing this. Whether he's at two stars, three stars, six stars, nine stars, 14 stars, I don't care how many stars he's at, he's a, just a phenomenal unit in this mode and, in fact, every mode in this darn game. In fact, if we had to make a list covering which unit would be the best in every mode, like optimally, this guy would be number one, 100%. 100% this guy would take the number one spot on that list as he's just an overall insane unit that has this insane applicability in every mode that he's in. So let's discuss some of his pros because he's got many and I'm serious. Well, first off, let's just talk about his green card real quick. So he essentially regains three new cards. That's awesome. He heals himself. That's right. He heals himself with while also getting new cards. So if you are playing anything outside of co-op, well, he can continue those combos with ease. And in co-op, usually even then, you can still continue your combos with ease. So really good unit. On top of that, any damage he takes, he does rest restore a percentage of that back. So that's always nice. Uh, another thing that is really good is that he's got a main ability that activates pretty quickly and allows him to transform. So once he transforms, he is, well, even scarier than before. Because now his blue card is a blast armor slashing type move, which does a hefty amount of damage 
And on top of that, his green card stays the same, doing the exact same thing. So if you're fishing for more blue cards or you need to reset your hand before a rising rush, well, you can do that. On top of that, this guy is a Dragon Ball Rising Rush farming simulator on his own. So with those green cards, he can fish for new cards, hopefully find a Dragon Ball, find a green card, do it again, and just keep doing that until he has got his Rising Rush ready, and then just, you know, click the gold and shiny button. So, yeah. On top of that, he got a whole bunch of damage reduction skills and also the ability to increase his card draw speed not once but twice, and damage reduction skills not once but also twice, so yeah, he will not necessarily be dying as quickly as a lot of players would think. On top of that, he's got a second main ability, because as all transforming units do, they have second main abilities, and that draws him a whole new hand. He also heals himself through his main ability, and that is insane. Yeah, they give him a lot. Maybe too much, in fact. So, you're OP. But, just as... Any unit with upsides, of course, there are always downsides. Well, first off, his blue card prior to his first transformation, or his actual transformation, it destroys all cards in his hands, deal extra damage. Now, this is okay, and it's not necessarily a downside, but it generally is in a format where you are trying to fish for Dragon Balls to then do a double Rising Rush. So in this particular mode, that type of skill isn't exactly very useful, and in fact is only really useful if you were to, let's say, stay in that form the entire game and try to do it as a last-ditch effort to finish off the last bars of your opponent's health. In which case, that's just kind of stupid, and you might as well just transform him and play more efficiently. Another thing is that he is a transformable unit, so although his stats will be increased once he transforms, until then he is a little bit more vulnerable than let's say, you know, a unit that is already starting off with all their base stats from to begin with. So there is that. And then finally, and this one is more of a skill-based issue, so this is not actually to do with the unit itself. But the player, if you are using this particular unit, you need to know how to handle yourself prior to a shield guard up. So no, may, may, when the shield goes back up to, to full, the AI will knock you all back. The whole point is to make sure that if you are using this unit and any other unit basically on this list, that you are not the target. So meaning your opponent, your teammate has to taunt for you and also has to be doing the majority of the damage near the end before the guard comes back. And if you know how to do that, and if you know how to cover change for your buddy, cover assist and dodge, and also have them take aggro when needed, well, he is not only going to be a very effective, but he's also going to make short work of that co-op boss. But despite all that, you know, there is the issue of if you are new or you don't understand how to play co-op efficiently or you find any of these extreme co-op bosses actually genuinely difficult, then he's probably not a recommended unit for you as you would be probably better off with a unit that can tank. So with that being said, despite all of those cons, he's just actually literally, he would be the best in this format if there weren't a unit that was not only safer in option, but is just overall always good in this format. So without further ado, let's go to our number one spot. But before we do that, yes, that's right, I, I, I did you dirty. Uh, we're going to talk about some honorable mentions. Now, if you've noticed, this is a top five list and not a top, top ten list. And the reason for that is because I could not find ten legitimate units to cover for Extreme Co-op. Now, if you have any units that you want me to try out, you know, to make, if I have to eventually remake this list or do an update, let me know in the comments down below what you found was very effective. Now, please be in mind that when I am referring to that, I am referring to generic units, not boost units. So please don't give me boost units. I will discard them and not, and disregard them. They will not be applied to my list. All right. But. I did find two other units that I wanted to put on this list, but I couldn't because, well, I didn't want to write top seven. It just felt wrong for the algorithm. So as a result, they are honorable mentions, but they are very close to Namaku. So as a result, here they are. So first up, we've got Zenkai 7 Android 21. And she is a phenomenal unit. Once the shield goes down, she is inflicting a lot of debuffs on the AI. She is just, in, in general, doing a fantastic job at forcing the AI's hand and just making them weaker and weaker until that rising rush is applied. She also buffs herself, buffs potentially her teammates. She's just all around a decent unit, but obviously her only issue 
is that, well, she's kind of linear. Extremely linear in co-op, despite being an overall fantastic unit. And the other honorable mention we have is our Super Gogeta Zenkai 7, the red one, obviously, not the blue one. And this guy is actually really, really good. He gets all his damage buffs. He has card draw speed for the first 15 seconds, but that goes away and you can't regain that, so that's always a con. But on top of that, he's got a way to heal. He's got an alt card. He's got a blue card that can faint, although it usually will never faint if it's when the shield is up. It just can't. And he's got actually a pretty good green card that, despite being bad in like stuff like PvP if activated wrong, in this format, actually activating it just in what we talk, call terms wrong is actually really good. And the reason for that is it seals all the enemy's blast cards for about three seconds. And that is more than enough time, let's say, if, you're, if your teammate is trying to use a green card that is supposed to knock the AI back. Well, now they don't have access to their blast card, so which means they only have access to either their green, blue, and strike. And if they pick strike, well, they're out of luck. So as a result, you can activate a lot of premature Doki Doki impacts, as well as just take control of the entire situation with his green card, whether you're trying to land it or not, making him just overall a fantastic unit and a decent tank. So I think that's enough about that. Let's get to number one. And at number one, we have God Shallot. Now this is not to be confused with Shallot, Super Saiyan Shallot, Super Saiyan 2 Shallot, or Super Saiyan 3 Shallot. I'm specifically saying God Shallot because any other Shallot is not as good and just you shouldn't use them in this format. This guy, however, is, I would say, the god of co-op, and it's not because he's the best at completing things within the timer count. Although, mind you, if he is with any other of the units on this list, you can definitely do most, if not all, of the extreme co-ops in the timer counts with this unit. So that's really good. I, I, I really can't say anything bad about him. So, after the first 10 timer counts, he transforms, and once he transforms, Oh boy, this dude, this dude is amazing. So he's got the ability to buff himself up, kind of like sim similar to Super Saiyan Blue Zenkai 7 Goku with his Blast and his Strike cards. On top of that, he's got a green card that not only knocks the opponent back, so it means that you get a couple of seconds to float and regain Vanish Gauge, but on top of that, it gives him card draw speed. So now he himself can fish for Dragon Balls for to become the Rising Rush Simulator. Yeah that. But on top of that, he's got a teachable blue. That's going to be actually quite useful, and I'm not even kidding you, because this dude in co-op with the right blue is a monster and just outright ridiculous. So if you're wondering which blue card this is, it is from the Super Saiyan Blue Future Vegeta. Picture right over here. You see this dude? He's the poster boy of just trying to surpass me. But his blue card is a fantastic blue card as it buffs your team or your buddy. That's right. It buffs buddies too by 20%. This means that everyone's blue cards will be dealing more damage every single time he launches it. So Shallot here, being able to use that ability, will be, well, by proxy, buffing not only yourself, your blue card, but also your teammate's blue card. On top of that, if he is in a pickle for whatever reason, he can heal himself. That's right, his main ability not only draws him another blue card, but it also heals him, so that's actually awesome. On top of this, this guy has really good stats just overall, and on top of that is a light element. And if you don't know what element we have for our extreme co-op bosses, well, they're dark. And uh, in this game, light beats dark, so he has an advantage already. So not only is he dealing more damage than he normally would, he's also taking less damage than he normally would. So this is just overall a fantastic unit that is able to stand the test of time within any of these modes. And honestly, is one of my go-to picks whenever I do any extreme co-op showcasing at what units to use, as he always manages to do it within the timer counts. At least not necessarily the generic timer counts with just two shallots, but can complete the event very, very efficiently with two shallots. Obviously, the best pairing for this guy is just any of the boost units or any of the units on this list along with him, as he is the primary tank and can survive not only ultimate cards, blue cards, rising rushes, blasts, strikes, you name it. 
the AI can do it, he can take it. So it's it's really good. He's just an overall solid unit. Honestly, the only issue and the only cons to this guy is that for the first 10 seconds, he is a little bit vulnerable. I'm not saying that he's going to outright die, but I am saying that he does take more damage than you would like for the first 10 timer count. So it's very important to not allow him to take hits. Or if you had to take a kit, maybe one or two max. You can win if you take three or four hits, but you're, it's an uphill battle from there because you retain the health and you only can heal once you get your second main ability. On top of that, if you're doing, if you're playing with randoms, one of the issues I find is that people want to complete things within a certain amount of timer counts, otherwise they don't want to bother. So as a result, Shallot doesn't always get to see the light of day in a random game. But if you are playing with friends, then in that case, he's usually a top pick as he is just, form, just a formidable unit and a solid overall, overall unit. So with that being said, guys, those are my top five best units in co-op, at least generic units. Um, if you disagree with anything on this list, let me know down in the comments below. Just be aware that this is an opinion list. So as a result, this is based upon the amount of testing, the amount of stuff that I've done to compile this list as accurately as I possibly could. But overall, if you do have any disagreements, just let me know. Like I said, in the comments down below, we can have a civil discussion about it and you can let me know what you think it is, what you think are better units for this mode. If you think that some of these units should have been changed around, you can totally tell me that too. I'll disagree with you, but at least as long as we're civil, it'll be cool. But with that being said, guys, that's the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't hesitate to tickle the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe and click at the bell for more of the castiones so you never miss another one of my videos. Have yourselves a salty day, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you had a time, Phil G. Phil G.